I'd like to welcome you back to another Daily Devotional. Uh, we're going to be talking about, continuing on the rest of this week, talking about the Garden of Eden and the fall of man and how God has put everything back together. But today we want to continue on in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, hold on to this, this is very important, Had God said that you shall eat of every tree of the garden? And when you think about the tricky, the craftiness of that, he began to plant a seed of doubt in the mind of Eve. She had to stop and think, hmm, God really say I couldn't eat of every tree? She began to think and run through her mind, and she remembered what God had said. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, that tomorrow and tomorrow's devotion. But I want you to think about today that seed of doubt. There is such a seed of doubt that is going around. And if, if Satan can, Satan's like the camel in the tent. If he can get his nose in the tent, you can get the whole entire camel in there. And he has been planting seeds of doubt into the minds of every person since the dawn of creation. Has God really said? He gets us to question God's word. He gets us to question uh, what the preacher says. And, and maybe you need to question sometimes what some of the preachers say. But to doubt God's word, that it is legit, that it is 100% infallible, that God's word is true. Oh, did God truly say that? Is that really what God was driving at? I mean, God's a God of love and mercy, right? Why would he care what I do? God cares because he loves you. He sent his son to die on the cross for your sins. That's why he cares. But Satan doesn't seem to care at all. In fact, he hates you. He despises you. But he comes across like, oh, I'm so, I'm on your side. I want things to work out well for you. <laughs> yeah, it's because he's evil. Satan is nothing but pure evil. That's all he is. And the best thing that he can do is he can change and twist and warp your mind. That's all he can do. And so we find ourselves getting ourselves into problems, getting ourselves into circumstances, and trying to become like God. And that's exactly what Satan has been out to do since the very dawn of time. My friend, can I tell you something? Can I tell you how much God truly loves you? He loves you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for your sins. But we try to hide those from our conscience. You know, Charles Spurgeon, the prince of preachers, had said, ah, how foolish we are. How we repent of the folly of, how we repent of the folly of our first parent every day when we seek to hide from conscience and then think it is hidden from God. To think that I, oh well, I can hide this thought from my mind and, and maybe God won't know it or I, I can maybe manipulate God's word to make it a little bit more of the way that I want it to fit. Our president, Barack Hussein Obama, had made a comment, uh, when he was talking about the new group ISIL, uh, or ISIS, however you you want to say it. I don't really want to give them the L. I don't think they deserve the L. We'll just continue to call them ISIS for as all I'm concerned. And he said that there's no way that we're going to defeat them with guns because they are an ideology and we have to change the ideology. I somewhat agree with him for, for once in my life. Religion is an ideology. Christianity is an ideology, of course, and of course their false hope of religion, their, their claim to fame is, is religion. And so this is a religious war. If this is a religious war, an all-out attack against God, now President Obama says that this is an attack on Muslims. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of Christians being, <laughs> for this to be an attack on Muslims. However, we'll give him his benefit of the doubt. I believe that if the president would call a day of prayer and fasting and a day of repentance, that we would all turn our hearts back to God, we would see ISIS or ISIL fizzle out because we would be able to destroy them through that ideology. However, he wants to sit uh, back in his White House with his cabinet of gurus and try to come up with a, a better plan. Uh, the only plan there is, is if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. It's the only fix. President Obama will probably never see this video. It'll never grace the White House, but I can tell you it is the only fix for his problem is for our, for our nation to repent and to turn back to God. If we would do that, then I believe that God would wipe out and destroy our enemies as he always does in times past.
But my friends today, Satan has given that little hint of doubt. Did God truly say, is that really the way that it is? Oh, surely not. This must be a better way. And he has tripped and duped the entire nation of America into believing that. There are pockets of believers who are still holding on to God's faith and his truth. And I promise you, my friend, if Jesus comes back and pulls us out, this is not going to be a pretty world for us to live in. I never thought we would see the day where people would be beheaded for their faith before the return of Christ. I know that there are some mid-tribbers out there who believe that and some post-tribbers who believe that, but I'm still a pre-tribber. I never thought it would get this bad first, but I still believe that Jesus is going to be coming extremely soon. I just never thought we would see it quite like this. When I was a kid growing up in the 80s and I heard about people having their heads chopped off, this is a this is a war of biblical proportions, my friend. So I don't care if you believe pre, mid, or post-trib or whatever, Jesus is coming really soon, my friend, soon and very very soon. So make sure that your heart is right with him. And don't be listening to the lies of the devil when he says, oh, has God really said that? Is the Bible really true? My friends, it is true cover to cover. 2,000 years ago, these beheadings for Christ were being foretold in the book of Revelation by John the Revelator, a man, by the way, that they could not kill. They couldn't kill him. They tried to dip him down in a vat of oil and burn him alive. When they couldn't kill the man, he was exiled into the Isle of Patmos where he wrote the book of Revelation. I believe God was sparing John for such a time as this to give us our warnings for today. The Bible gives us a clear, clear-cut warning. If you read the book of Revelation, you're blessed. It's the only book of the Bible that says you're even blessed for just reading it. My friend, dig into the Word of God. Jesus is coming soon. It is very, very real. So keep your eyes on this guy.